Recording in progress. All right, uh, we're starting off with uh, Unit 6.1.3, that is Global Trends in Media Organizations and Access to Media. We talk about usability of uh, media as well, the extent to which, for instance, uh, if we talk about uh, newspapers and radio, along with television these days, uh, the extent to which individuals used to use radio, television, and newspapers has declined over the last few decades. I don't. So, global trends in media organization and access. Global trends in media organization and its access, right? Now, in the last units, we sought to provide an overview of the global media landscape in terms of the degree of media freedom in different countries and the role played by the state. In unit 6.1.3, that is this unit, we seek to complete the picture by looking at the underlying trends in media, uh, underlying trends in media sorry, global organization of access to the media over recent years. Now, when we talk about global trend over here, there are four different factors that I'd like to discuss. Number one, we speak about capitalist globalization. Number two, we speak about neoliberalism. Number three, deregulation. And number four, digitalization. These are the four uh, different headings that we'll be dealing with today, inshallah. So, to start off with, a capitalist globalization. The second one is, like I said, neoliberalism. The third one is deregulation. And the fourth one is digitalization. One, two, three, and four, right? These four have to be taken into account. Today. These are the four that we'll be discussing. The global organization of the media today reflects a number of different the economic organization of countries around the world and the relationships between these different countries. Now, to what extent do you think capitalist globalization has affected the economic relationships between different countries and within the same country as well? To what extent do you think neoliberalism has impacted? To what extent do you think deregulation has impacted? And to what extent do you think digitalization has impacted, right? Impacted what? Impacted the economy organization of countries around the world and the relationships between these countries amongst themselves. There are four major developments, like I said, we'd be taking into account. And to start off with capitalist globalization. Now, what do we mean when we talk about capitalist globalization? Let me show you Mr. William I. Robinson. Who is Robinson? If we have a look at him. Yes, an American professor of sociology at the University of California. He's still alive. According to Robinson, rather before that, capitalist globalization. Globalization is what is When globalization, ki baat karte hai, beta, the globalization, in other words, has to do with the extent to which physical borders today have started blurring away. Or in other words, what I mean is, kis hat tak hamare physical borders jo exist karte hai, आज उनकी सिग्निफिकेंस कम होती जा रही है अब सवाल ही पैदा होता है कि इन फिजिकल बॉर्डर्स की सिग्निफिकेंस कैसे कम हो रही होगी देखें अब आपके पास फिजिकल बॉर्डर्स पहले भी थे फिजिकल बॉर्डर्स आज भी हैं बट इफ आई हैव अ लुक एट दिस थ्रू अ सोशियोलॉजिकल लेंस आई एम श्योर यू वुड एग्री इफ आई से कि टुडे विद द पास ऑफ टाइम देयर इज बीन एन इंक्रीज इन द अमाउंट ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी और इंटरकनेक्टेडनेस अमंगस्ट पीपल राइट फॉर इंस्टेंस अ सिंपल एग्जांपल पीपल टुडे आर watching if if you talk about us pakistanis the extent to which people today are watching this uh, what's this uh, turkish drama the artigal drama right or in other words you see people today they are watching korean dramas right the extent to which we have adapted to see for us to adapt to something we need to know we need to have exposure to that so this globalization despite of their being physical borders they were there they still are but today because of technological advancement there has been a lot more of exposure that we have as compared to the past this exposure has led to cultural exposure this uh, this exposure could be referred to as cultural exposure it could be exposure in terms of your religious values it could be exposure in terms of the cuisines it could be exposure in terms of the type of music people listen to the interest people hold the extent to which people consider themselves to be a part of a particular community right they all examples of 
ग्लोबलाइजेशन ठीक है तो ग्लोबलाइजेशन इन्वॉल्व ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बिकमिंग इंक्रीजिंगली इंटरकनेक्टेड सो दैट नेशनल बाउंड्रीज इन सम रिस्पेक्ट एटलीस्ट बिकम लेस इम्पॉर्टेंट राइट दीज नेशनल बाउंड्रीज बिकमिंग लेस इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड द वर्ल्ड आई यूज वॉज ब्लरिंग अवे जैसे ब्लर अवे नहीं हो रही होती कोई भी चीज राइट वो खत्म होती भी हमें नजर आ रही है अकॉर्डिंग टू रॉबिनसन टू थाउजेंड फोर ग्लोबलाइजेशन रिप्रेजेंट द लेटेस्ट स्टेज इन द हिस्टोरिकल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ कैपिटलिज्म राइट तो कैपिटलिज्म एज इट स्टार्टेड ऑफ कैपिटलिज्म के अंदर आपके पास देर बिन न्यूमर समाउट ऑफ चेंजेस राइट कैपिटलिज्म इन इट सेल्फ आपका इन्वॉल्व होता हुआ आ रहा है राइट जब आपका कैपिटलिज्म इन्वॉल्व हुआ है तो वन ऑफ दिस लेटेस्ट चेंज अकॉर्डिंग टू रॉबिनसन हैज बीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ globalization right globalization like he says represents the latest stage in the historical transformation of capitalism for most of the 20th century capitalism was organized on a nation state basis but in the 1970s the system was faced with a crisis of stagnant growth and rising prices and falling and uh, falling profits so 1970s mein it was seen ke bhai jan aapke paas economy grow hi nahi kar rahi right stagnant growth yahan there's this term over here stagflation of what exactly is stagflation And what what exactly is stagflation? जब आपके पास आप देखते हो कि आपकी economic growth किसी भी country की कम होती जा रही है, inflation आपका बढ़ रहा है, unemployment आपकी बढ़ रही है, तो we the term that we typically use for this is stagflation, right? So stagnant economic growth with a lot of inflation being experienced, right? So combination of this, we're using the word stagflation over here, right? Now a typical question kids ask is, sir, do we need to learn this? I mean, it's good. It's good in knowing these different sociological. I mean, I wouldn't really call this a sociological concept, but nonetheless, you could use this in your CA examinations. So, but in the 1970s, the system was faced with a crisis of stagnant growth. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, a crisis of stagnant growth and rising prices. That is inflation and failing profits. Over oh, the next two decades, now timeline: 1970s to 1990s to 2004, when Mr. Robinson came up with this. To 2022 today. See, look at how things have been changing. Just look at how this capitalist system has evolved. Now, stagnation and failing, falling profits. Over the next two decades, Robinson argues capitalism was reorganized on a global scale. So, we are talking about a transformation. We are talking about a transformation over here. Let me just write this down so that it gets easier for you to understand. We are talking about a transformation. Transformation of what? Transformation of capitalism from relying on nation states to going all global. Clear? आज आपको अगर हम चाइना की बात करते हैं सिंपल एग्जांपल यू नो अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स दैट वी यूज टुडे दे आर फ्रॉम चाइना राइट फ्रॉम आई थिंक गॉन आर द डेज जब हम कहते थे ये चाइना का प्रोडक्ट है आपके पास अगर महंगा तरीन फोन बियर्स के पीछे से आप खोल के देखें तो लिखा होता है इन चाइना राइट तो आपके पास वी टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ वॉट दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ कैपिटलिज्म राइट टिल दाइनटीन सेवेंटीज एंड राइट आफ्टर नाइनटीन आपके पास ग्लोबलाइजेशन का इम्पैक्ट होना शुरू हो गया था तो ओवर द नेक्स्ट टू डेज रॉबिनसन आर्ग्यूज कैपिटलिज्म वाज रीऑर्गेनाइज्ड ऑन अ ग्लोबल स्केल विद द ग्रोथ ऑफ मल्टीनेशनल और ट्रांसनेशनल कॉर्पोरेशन वी ऑल नो व्हाट मल्टीनेशनल कॉर्पोरेशन आर मोर ओवर विथ वेरी गुड more over with the collapse of with the so called collapse of communism right we talking about we saying we using the word so called collapse right so called in other words communism and its true essence there are many sociological commentators who claim karte ki common uh, communism jo theoretically dikhai jati wo to kahin pe hamare paas thi nahi so the collapse of so called communism at the end of the 1980s regions and areas that had previously operated outside capitalism scope were one china the former ussr angola and mozambique and others who were in cover and cooperated into global capitalist system ab aapke paas like i said let's have a look at the time frame 1970s right nation state ke basis pe businesses operate karte the 1990 onwards they started getting global internet पाकिस्तान के ऊपर इफेक्ट दस पंद्रह साल बीस साल बाद पंद्रह साल के बाद आता है राइट पीपल हैव स्टार्टेड गोइंग ग्लोब आई मीन कंट्रीज हैव स्टार्टेड गोइंग ग्लोबल बिजनेसेस हैव स्टार्टेड गोइंग ग्लोबल अब आपके पास जो 
इन्फ्लेशन थी आपके पास जो राइज ऑफ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट थी आपके पास जो इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ स्टैगनेंट हो गई थी इस पर कैसे इम्पैक्ट पड़ सकता है सी अगर आप एक सिंपल एग्जाम्पल दिस वुड बी प्री रिलेटेबल टू यूल एज वेल इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आई मीन देर सो मेनी बिजनेस यू गो टू एनी नाइस गुड ब्रांड एंड यू आप यू ही चले जाए दुबई चले जाए यूके चले जाए कहीं पर भी चले जाए आप वहां पर कपड़े शॉप पे जीन्स शीन्स उठाते नीचे लिखा होता है मेड इन शर्ट उठाते लिखा होता है मेड इन बांग्लादेश जीन्स उठाते लिखा होता है मेड इन पाकिस्तान right so why is it that they doing this they doing this to save themselves some money right yahi aapke paas uh yahi aapke paas the cost to produce any product would be higher if it is produced in the more developed countries right cost kyu badhti hai aapke paas labor cost zyada hai aapke paas running expenses zyada hai wahi business aap apna utha ke kisi developing ya Less developed country में डाल देते हैं तो इट सेव दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट सेव दैट पर्टिकुलर मल्टा नेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लॉर्ड ऑफ मनी इफ इट सेविंग दैम लॉर्ड ऑफ मनी दैट इन अदर वर्ड मीन द चांसेस ऑफ गेनिंग मोर लॉर्ड ऑफ वेट इंक्रीज द चांसेस ऑफ देम मेकिंग मोर प्रॉफिट इंक्रीज right that it gets better for them because then they can get into competition again they can compete with each other while at the same time making a point that their profits aren't really affected if anything that keep on growing if anything it keeps on growing uh, increasing get this here so i hope this first capitalist this concept of capitalist capitalist globalization is clear to everyone right moving on to the next one yes child what is communism communism i mean it's a to a to towards the end uh communism remember karl marx claimed to a time would come when we'd have uh, equality equality in terms of uh, and where the government would into the general idea is that the government would intervene and everyone and the government would work towards bringing in equality amongst everyone right so karl marx's prediction agar aapko yaad ho capitalism khatam hoga communism aayega capitalism ke andar government intervention itni zyada nahi hoti in the sense that aapke profits जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रॉफिट के लिए काम कर रही होती हैं, दे आर अलाउड टू मेक द मनी दैट दे मेकिंग ठीक है कम्युनिज्म के अंदर स्टेट इंटरवेंशन ज्यादा होती है एंड व्हिच लीड्स टू विद 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 द अपेरेंट पर्पस बीइंग दैट देयर वुड बी इक्वालिटी बिटवीन ऑल तो मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट इन लाइन ओवर हियर इज न्यू लिबरलिज्म राइट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यू लिबरलिज्म न्यू लिबरलिज्म की जब हम बात करते हैं तो न्यू लिबरलिज्म है क्या जनाबे वाला न्यू लिबरलिज्म दीस डेवलपमेंट्स वर गाइडेड by a political philosophy right now these developments were guided by a political philosophy there's someone there at the back end trying to guide you right aapke paas aap ek nation state se aap capitalist system ko evolve karte hue transform karte hue global bana rahe hain to uske piche koi na koi to think tank hoga right we're talking about an involvement of a political philosophy over here referred to as neo liberalism now what do neo liberals believe in neo liberals believe that prosperity and freedom are best promoted by allowing businesses to pursue profits with as little state regulation as possible so according to this political philosophy of neo liberalism we can help individuals increase we could help individuals rather i'd say we could help these organizations these businesses make more of money because of course if businesses are making money eventually aapke paas economy grow ho rahi hai economic growth ho rahi hai right so the idea this new liberalist idea over here is to have prosperity to have prosperity how by promoting or allowing business to work in a more freer manner to be able to pursue profits with as little state regulation as possible and as a consequent as a consequence consequently according to robinson global organizations such as the imf imf world trade organization and world bank become promoters of neo liberalism and hundreds of multilateral and bi- multilateral bilateral and global free trade agreements were concluded enabling the growth of tncs now i'd want everyone to give this a read this part a read on your own first but before that for the ones who do not know what does the word multilateral mean multilateral in other words in this context agreeing upon 
agreeing or participating in by three or more parties, especially the government of different countries. Multilateral example could be multilateral negotiations, right? On this, at the same time, once you know what multilateral is, I'm assuming everyone would get an idea about what bilateral is in this case too. Involving by means too, involving two parties, especially countries with, for example, the example could be, for example, we could say the bilateral agreement between Japan and any other country. Okay. So uh, this is the part that I'd wanted everyone to focus on. So what is what? Yeah. So, so consequently, according to Robinson, global organizations, we're talking about an intervention by these global organizations, right? Such as the IMF, we keep on hearing about IMF, our country every now and then seeks help from IMF, World Trade Organizations, World Bank, they became promoters of neoliberalism. Now, how could they be promoters of neoliberalism? By coming up with policies that could potentially, that could apparently potentially increase economic growth. Clear to you? Now, became promoters of neoliberalism and hundreds of multilateral, bilateral and global free trade agreements were concluded, which enabled the growth of transnational corporations. The transnational corporations, also referred to as Multinational corporations are companies that operate in more than one country. I just give you guys an example, right? Now, if you have a brand originate, you can see that 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 you they say, or the general idea over here is that if you have economic stability, then you have society overall can their prosperity. Okay, one organization is making money, research and development, then you have to do society can their better. Apparently, again, then you society can their better. Right now, moving on, the third. Important thing that has to be dealt with over here is deregulation. What is deregulation? When we talk about deregulation, deregulation is the process of removing or reducing state regulations. Removing or if you can't reduce, you may be, uh, I'm sorry, if you can't remove, you might as well reduce state regulations that limit the activities of businesses. Neoliberals see this as desirable. That's pretty clear cut, we have discussed this 10 minutes back, right? Neoliberals see it desirable for the state to intervene as less as they possibly can, right? So neoliberals see this as desirable, critiques see it as removing potentially important safeguards for consumers. What Robert McChesney in 2001 describes as the centerpiece of these neoliberal policies was the call for commercial media and communication markets. Now the call for commercial media and communication markets. Ab sawal ye paida hota hai, you know, I'm sure everyone would agree, hum agar baat karte kisi ki business ke grow karne ki, to businesses aap ke grow kaise kar rahe hote hai? By improving, by helping them improve their sales. To be able to help them improve their sales, it's pretty essential that you work on or that you, that you help uh, seek help from uh, by 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 marketing your product, right? And you could put it that, and you could possibly market your product through involvement of the media. And you see how media is stepping in, right? Give this a read, maybe if you want to. A radio host, a professor from the US, is still alive. Do we proceed? Now, the call for commercial media and communication markets to be deregulated. This allowed foreign companies, particularly, but not only 
importantly, America wants to buy international media markets. And as a result, media and telecommunication companies were able to expand on an enormous scale, both domestically and internationally. Free idea? Any question? I deregulate Karen Take Aapke Pass foreign companies be operate kar sake, run kar sake, buy out kar sake in those companies. So, right? The other day I heard uh, from someone saying Daraz has been taken over by uh, AliExpress. I'm, I'm not sure, but if the logo has changed, so probably there's some sort of uh, truth to it, right? I'm not sure to what extent. Likewise, aap to pata hai, there was this uh, another uh, app with the name Sook, Sook.com. It has been uh, taken over by Amazon, right? And uh, likewise, you all know WhatsApp has been taken over by uh, Facebook people. And I believe so is Instagram. And we've discussed this a lot more in detail when we're discussing concentration, right? Now, number four. The fourth in line we have over here is digitalization. Digitalization, look at the way we're taking a class. This is an example of digitalization again. Gone are the days, I mean, this device that I have in front of me, this iPad has a lot of books in it, a lot of books that have to do with your syllabus and beyond as well. This again is a tiny little example of digitalization. Right, digitalization, the replacement of analog electronic and mechanical devices with digital technology, the digital revolution. This began in the 1980s and underpins the growth of the new media. Now the growth of new media, we have discussed new media earlier, right? We've discussed new media earlier, new media in contrast to traditional media, traditional media, such as we use the term, I'm actually talking about television, radio, books, magazines, uh, posters, so on and so forth. Whereas when we use the term new media, new media has more to do with the internet, right? Uh, like uh, different uh, uh, social, 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 what do you call it? Social media websites. And uh, we have different apps like, uh, we have different, we, we, just, we have a lot of platforms, right? This class, like I said, is again, an example of digitalization, right? Now, at the center of this de development is the global spread of the internet. The global spread of the internet. Internet has a huge role to play when you talk about the growth of new media. By 2017, nearly half the world's population, that is 3.5 billion out of a global population of 7.5 billion were connecting to the internet through PCs, laptops, and tablets, smartphones, and other devices according to statistic and 2018, right? So we're talking about 3.5 billion out of a global population of 7.5 billion. And if we have a look at some even more recent uh, statistics from Statis, uh, statistic, sorry, Statista, worldwide digital population as of January 2021. As of January 2021, there were 4.66 billion active internet users worldwide, 59.5% of the global population. Oops, there you go. Yeah. Of this total, 92.6%, that is 4.32 billion, access the internet via their mobile phones. So we see a very clear cut, we get a very clear cut idea that you have a lot mobile phones you use current. That's what, so about 92.6%, right? So 4.66 billion in total 2021 can there, and here you can see 3.5 billion. So over these three, four years, you can see this change. And of course, if we take into account COVID, COVID has just made this even uh, go higher. Yeah, crazy, we have crazy figures now, and uh, COVID ki se, because there was more time people had to spend at home. This is uh, internet is one thing that had kept the world going. So, however, the proportion of the population able to access the internet varies significantly between the industrialized and less industrialized world, right? I mean, if you, to make it uh, more relatable for you guys, up simple city baat hai, Karachi ke andar ya Pakistan ke kisi bhi rural area ko compare karte, to Karachi ke andar you would have 
more of internet would have access to internet for sirf karachi nahi koi bhi aapka bada shehar as compared to a less uh, what do you call it uh, compared to a rural area of pakistan so likewise isi tarike se for industrialized societies of for the industrialized world there has been the usage has been more as compared to the less industrialized world moving on we could have a look at this as well but i'm not sure if this could help us much because of this being black and white so yeah taking a step ahead there were four factors that we just discussed my dear and these four factors we discussed them all under the heading of global trends in media organization and access the these four factors are number one we spoke about capitalist globalization number two we spoke about neoliberalism number three we spoke about deregulation number four we spoke about digitalization i hope all of this makes sense taking it a step ahead moving on and let's talk about trends in global media organizations if we talk about these trends in media global media organizations we would more or less we would more or less be uh, uh, focusing on the two different type of integrations horizontal integration and vertical integration so trends in global media organizations outside of the world's authoritarian regimes the general trend that is evident over the last decade according to mike jensen in 2016 is that more and more of both the traditional and new media along with the infrastructure needed to deliver messages is owned and operated by these transnational companies operating on a global scale ab dekhe if you talk about traditional media or if you talk about new media fox network i'm sure fox tv sabke sabko pata hai could be an example of traditional media new media netflix sabko pata hai don't you think these are run by transnational companies that are operating globally right agar aap isi netflix ko pakistan se operate karenge to aapko alag content nazar aata hai aap uae se usko operate karte to aapko alag content nazar aata hai right this has come about through two distinct processes known in economics as horizontal and vertical integration we talking about horizontal and vertical integration over here clear here and i'm assuming everyone understands what jensen had to say right let me read this for you more and more of both both the traditional and the new media along with the infrastructure needed to deliver messages is today owned and operated by these huge transnational companies multinational companies clear to you taking it ahead this has come about through two distinct processes known in economics as in horizontal and vertical integration ab horizontal integration kya hai and how is horizontal integration different from vertical integration right ye horizontal integration ho gaya aapka ye aapka vertical integration ho gaya theek hai horizontal integration is also known as cross media ownership right and refers to the fact that the bigger companies often own a diverse range of the type of medias so the term that we use for cross integration horizontal integration over here is cross media right this murdock family that we spoken about in detail rupert murdock here you go the organizations the companies that he founded you can see their logos over here right i'm not saying owns i'm saying he founded them he is the one who took a start here right so he is an australian american yeah didn't start the same thing if you can see this here see it here you can see it so yeah he is born in 1931 a net worth of 21.5 billion usd right <laughs> no because because he's he's seen his eyes he's seen his eyes we've had a detailed discussion on this if you still want to understand this better you might as well uh, google the net worth of uh, uh, who's the guy malik riaz in pakistan or yeah i wouldn't want to name any politician who's uh, why would you expect me to know that not right now you can go back home and search whatever you feel like so we we did show i showed showed it to you over here on the screen right and it was not even significant in front of what murdock owns so yeah 
Uh, we're talking about horizontal integration. This is also known as cross-media ownership, right? And refers to the fact that the bigger media companies often own a diverse range, uh, a diverse range of types of media. You know, this book uh, by Collins, right? This book that we're reading from, right? This was, I'm not sure uh, if it is still uh, a part of uh, Murdoch's network but uh, it was harper collins was once uh, uh, owned by murder i'm not sure about today we'd have to double check of course i can go back home and double check this so yeah for example the murder family which owns news corporation and 21st century fox in addition to newspapers in britain australia and the us owns books magazine publishers film companies and tv companies right the media tycoon Rupert Murdoch could be an amazing example of cross-media cooperation, of horizontal integration. Horizontal, see horizontal. Horizontal, vertical that difference, I'm sure everyone knows. This is horizontal, this is vertical, right? Horizontal, look at the wide range. Look at the wide range, right? From books to magazines to films film companies to newspapers to tv companies and whatnot on the other hand we talk about vertical integration and the example that i want to use for vertical integration would be of netflix a platform that was used initially to be able to show people some shows some movies however with the pass of time netflix today has its own production going on Netflix original. Right? So, vertical Vertical. This is vertical. Yeah. Now, vertical integration involves the combination in one company and the combination in one company of two or more stages in the production and distribution process. Right? We're talking about the stages, the key word over here, my dear, is stages, right? We using the word stages, the different stages you have in the production or distribution. So aapke paas distribution to pehle kar hi raha tha Netflix, ab wo production ki taraf bhi aage hai. Clear here? It enables companies to exert greater economic control over their operating environment. Of course, but today they don't have to worry. They produce, they distribute on their own so this would give more of economic control to the company for example time warner owns the warner brothers film studio but also owns an international change of cinemas in which it shows films produced by warner brothers similarly in 2013 netflix which provided an online video streaming service initially in 190 countries has also produced its own original films and TV programs. Okay, so this downward vertical integration we can say from distribution they moved towards production. Okay, moving on. Vertical and horizontal integration has led to the creation of enormous media transnational companies or media conglomerates. We've spoken about media conglomerates earlier. Do you guys know them? Have you seen these faces? No? Here you go. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Get it? So, uh, moving on. Vertical and horizontal integration has led to the creation of enormous media transnational companies or media conglomerates that increasingly dominate the global picture. Talk about domination. Talk about domination here. There are so many search engines, but eventually quite a majority ends up using Google. I'm sure there are so many people who wouldn't even think of any other search engine or to the point that they wouldn't even know if there are different search engines that exist, right? Everyone Googles. So that increasingly dominate the global picture. A conglomerate is a corporation that is made up of a number of different seemingly unrelated businesses, a number of different seemingly unrelated businesses. The companies operate independently of each other, 
but are overseen by a holding company. Clear here? Now, अब Google की जब आप बात करते हो, Google को own करने वाली company ये है, Alphabet. Yes. यहाँ पे आपने क्या पढ़ा भी ये यहाँ पे आपने पढ़ा ना क्योंकि यहाँ पे नहीं लिखा नो नो इट ऑलवेज आज भी ओके नाउ मूविंग ऑन यूट्यूब इज एक्चुअली एस सब्सिडीरी ऑफ गूगल बट गूगल इटसेल्फ इज ओन बाय अल्फाबेट राइट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू वेट नॉट शर्ट फॉर हैव इट ओवर योर लेट मी जस्ट मेक इट सिंपल Like hmm? Yeah, yeah. So I show to you. डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट बुक यू यूजिंग उस किताब के अंदर देर वुड बी अदर कॉन्टेंट दैट दिस बुक ओके तो या ट्राइंग टू मेक गूगल वर्क बट Let's not blame Google. Let's blame the internet here. That to date, I don't know what happened. Our family time limit is very long. 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 Okay, so yeah, I don't think it's wise. How do I know that? Don't worry. Okay, have a look at this alphabet. This company C. You know this. You know this, and the way you see them, they're both separate. This is an online media streaming platform, and this is a search engine, as we know them, right? However, they're both like I was saying, owned by this. Clear to you? Now, taking it a step ahead, vertical and horizontal integration has led to the creation of enormous media transnational corporations or media conglomerates that increasingly dominate the global picture. A conglomerate is a corporation that is made up of a number of different seemingly unrelated businesses. The companies operate independently of each other, but are overseen by a holding company. Does this make sense to you now? Different businesses. The word there was seemingly different businesses, right? Both being overlooked by a holding company. Yeah. It's it's a company that owns uh, both of these. It's more like the daddy there, keeping a check. So yeah, moving moving on. YouTube is actually a subsidiary of Google, but Google itself is owned by Alphabet, a holding company set up in 2015 by Google's founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Um, having a look at this, Table 6.1.2 lists the 10 largest media companies globally by revenue in 2016. 2016 भी आज से बहुत ज़्यादा पुरानी बात हो गई. That's 2022 as we speak. So yeah, this is the company we're talking about. Clear here? Now this is 2016, but uh, for now this is what we have. Have a look at this Alphabet Incorporation, 82 billion, and News Corporation, Rupert Murdoch, Facebook Incorporation, 25 billion. G. 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 Six K card. Okay. So do do you all get this beta, right? So moving on, if we take this a step ahead, where were we? 
Yeah. Next, we talk about trends in global media access, right? It's a better we spoke about. Here you go. It's a better. Okay, we started off with the global context. This is the third or the fourth time I'm reminding you of the same thing. We spoke about these four factors. Then we went on and then we discussed trends in global media organizations where we spoke about uh, horizontal integration and vertical integration. And now we talk about trends in global media access, right? Global media access. For instance, remember when I said the amount of access that people have, if you talk about internet gaining its popular, internet's popularity increasing, but at the same time we need to keep in mind internet ki popularity is opening jaga pe bad hi rahi hai. Lekin, internet ki har bandhe ke paas hai. Right? There are so many less industrialized uh, societies and countries where the access of internet is even to date a problem. And there are so many parts in our country. Aaj bhi maar paas rural areas kaafi Pakistan kaise hain jaha pe internet ka access has been has been a problem. So we will be talking about trends in global media. Serving global trends in media access in 2018, UNESCO states that access increased between 2012 and 2016. This access increased between 2012 and 2016. Media access. Although the extent of this increase varied significantly across regions that we know as well, right? There are regions jump access. Zyada speed se bada jump pe, and then there are regions jump pe jis speed se nahi bada jis speed se hum is expect kar rahe the, yaar jis speed se baaki jagahon pe bada hai. This development has been accompanied by significant changes in how audience. There have been significant changes in how audiences combine both old and new media for accessing news and entertainment. The internet has registered the highest growth in users through, although television country continues to be the most popular medium. At the same time, consumption of newspapers and radio has declined overall, though this trend is not evident in all countries. Now, whatever was written over here, we all know this. Subsada usage aaj aapke paas, subsada rapid jo growth hui hai, rapid growth wo internet mein hui hai, internet usage mein hui hai. Television aaj utna popular nahi raha, lekin nonetheless television still today is popular. When you talk about newspapers, when you talk about radio, they have declined in significantly. Radio? Now, let me just show this to you if this makes sense. The time spent per day with the digital versus traditional media in the U United States. The time spent per day with the digital versus traditional media. Just have a look at these, right? Of digital and traditional media, I mean, look at the amount of difference. I mean, let's compare 2011 with 2022. Just look at the amount of difference over here, right? Now, the time spent per day with the digital versus traditional media. Look at this difference. In 2011, there were more of there was there was more time spent uh, on traditional media than digital media. And 2011, so add 2022 and 2022 just started. Look at the amount of difference. Aaj aapke paas digital media zyada use ho raha hai aur traditional media kam use ho raha hai. And we're talking about United States over here, right? Moving on, you could have a look at this one as well. Time spent per day with the digital versus traditional media. Uh, whatever else you, yeah? Sure. Now, do we proceed? Clear, beta? Now, taking it ahead, internet and mobile use. While the numbers accessing the internet have continued to grow, the rate of growth has been slowing down recently. With a 5% annual growth in 2017 compared to 10% in 2012. So in 2012, this growth rate was higher as compared to 2017. 5% annual growth whereas 2012 annual growth 10% key, right? One of the reasons behind this could be that by and large, you have a society in the transformation. Now, those people who used to use it, I mean, you know, back then it was something new. Everyone wanted to have it. I mean, today, if you have a look around, I mean, your domestic staff 
uses smartphones and if they're using smartphones, they, I'm assuming, do have access to internet, right? Now, moving on. At the same time, mobile internet connectivity has played an important part in expanded, expanding access, right? When we talk about an expansion in terms of this access, right? The access of your mobile ki wajah se bad gaya hai, right? It's one device that could help you take pictures, that could help you send an email, that could help you read the news, that could help you prepare for an assignment, that could help you do your research, that could help you connect with people around. Clear to you? Now, particularly in Asia and Pacific and the Pacific and in Africa, the number of unique mobile phone subscriptions increased in three, from 3.89 billion in 2012 to 4.83 billion in 2016. That is two third of the world's population. Clear? Do we all understand this? So, according to Statista, Apkepas, this global unique mobile phone subscriptions 2015 to 2025, having a look at what they have to say, this document was published in. Uh, 2020, the statistics, the statistics show the number of unique mobile subscription subscribers worldwide from 2010 to 2025. The number of global mobile connection is predicted to reach around 5.86 billion by 2025. 2025 is again down the corner, three years more. And this, imagine 5.86 billion. Clear? Yes. The 2025 key prediction here. Clear here? Next, broad, broadcast media. What is broadcast media? Just to look traditional media, typical media, we get the broadcast media. So we referring to the television, radio, newspapers, magazine. They all in broadcast to carry just on the mass media, we get there, right? Mass ma ma massive skill upload. Broadcast karaoke. Moving on. Broadcast media in Western Europe and North America, the primacy of television, primacy, primarily, right? The primacy of television as a source of information is being challenged by the internet, especially for the younger generations. Right? Today, if there's any news, you would the younger generation relies more on the internet. It's handy. You don't have to walk up to the television, pick up a remote control, and switch on your television or wait for the newspaper the next day. It's instant, it's right, right? So in Western Europe and Northern America, the primacy of television as a information is being challenged by the internet, particularly among young generations. In other regions, <laughs> such as Africa, television is replacing radio as a main source of information. Again, regional differences, cross-cultural variations, where economic stability, economic growth, Moving on, the switch from analog to digital television, digitalized television. There were days that we had a TV boxes. Right? Television can the Netflix, television can the other options record. You can watch whatever there's there's a lot more variety. Right? Kitte logon ke paas Netflix hotas ke saath Amazon Prime bhi use kar rahe Right, it's just giving you more of a variety. So the switch from analog to digital television has been uneven across the globe. The switch is significant in that it potentially opens up a wider range of channels to viewers, as satellite broadcasting has done previously. According to the International Telecommunication Union in 2017, the International Telecommunication Union Hekia, it's a specialized agency by the United Nations that is responsible for all matters related to information and communication technologies. It was established on 17th May 1965 as the International Telegraph Union, making it the oldest international organization. It has its headquarters in Switzerland. And like I said, it was founded in 1865. I'm sorry, not 1965, 1865. Clear deal? So it's an agency of the United Nations. So we could give it some credibility. According to the International Tele Telecommunication Union in 2017, 28% of 198 countries had completed the process, clear, in 2017. 
it was ongoing in 35% and was yet to start in 7% and the situation in the remaining 30% was not known. Do we understand this here? Everyone, right? We're talking about 2017. Have a look at these numbers again. We're talking about 2017. We're talking about 198 countries. Uh, 28% 20, of 198 countries, they had already completed it. So let me just write it down. That would make it easier for you. We're talking about 198 countries. Just miss it. 28% had completed this, uh, what do you call it, completed the shift. And what shift are we talking about? We're talking about a shift from analog to digital. Analog to digital, yeah. And then, Thirty-five percent ongoing. The shift is ongoing. And then we have seven percent of them. Shift hadn't started as yet. Moreover, 30% situation was unknown. Out of 198 countries back in 2017, Clear, dear? Any question? And all of this is coming from the International Telecommunication Union, right? Let's talk about the press. Print newspapers have been, everyone knows the press, right? Everyone knows the word press. Press newspapers have been the most severely affected by the growth of the internet. I, I, I have seen that happening there were days. And back when we were young, we used to see these newspaper, uh, these, these, these uh, individuals on bikes going from one place to another through newspapers. And today we see the reduction in the amount of con uh, newspaper consumption. I mean, uh, recently uh, there's this, uh, these corns that you get from roadside, right? right? Uh, the other day, I think it was yesterday or the day before, the day before, yeah. And you know, Makai ka packet mein dekha, to uske andar bhi, jo paper jiske andar dal ke de rote, wo bhi it wasn't, uh, I'm not, I couldn't really tell if it was Chinese, Japanese, but it wasn't English or it wasn't Urdu. Wow. Yeah. So, aapke paas, look at the, look at the amount of, this very clearly shows ke aapke paas itna reduction a gaya in terms of, uh, Newspaper consumption. Newspaper circulation globally declined by nearly 8% between 2012 and 2017. And like I said, it's 2022 today as we speak. According to the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers, the, that is WNIFRA, although it rose significantly in South, some Asian and Pacific countries such as China, Indonesia, and India and Indonesia, most newspapers have started producing online versions in an attempt to counteract this trend. We all know this, right? Dawn ki aaj app hai. Dawn ki aaj website hai. Junk ki aaj app hai. Skip ni website hai. Clear? Uh, some allowing free access, others require payment. Clear here? Now, other content that uh, I believe would be helpful for you all as well. I just bring this over here. You might as well would want to give it a read or rather I just explain it to you real quick as well. So typically activities now under the same heading, right? Under the same heading, typically activities such as listening, viewing and reading usually remain separate. People listen to music, watch television, and read newspapers using different media. However, new technologies such as your cellular phone have forged a convergence between these activities because they allow different types of media to be consumed on the same device at the same time. Like I was giving you all an example, the usage of a cellular phone. Aapka mobile phone, aapko ye sare khatte ek device se karne ka mauka de raha hota Clear? You can watch television, you can listen to your favorite music, you can read a newspaper, 
do we get this? So we could refer to this as digital convergence. Now, usi tarike se janab age reading ki jab hum baat karte hain to reading ke andar there has been there's been a decline in the percentage of adult population reading a newspaper. One feature of this particular market is its horizontal split with markedly with marked readership divisions. Age ki baat karte hain to ye dekh le 75% of their readership is from the 50 plus age group. When you talk about gender, there are more men than women who read a daily newspaper. Ethnicity ki baat karte hain to like we had were discussing piche ke aaj bhi aapke paas press India ke andar ya newspaper circulation India ke andar hai. Clear dear? Do we proceed? Ab usi tarike se having a look at this, we've spoken about this as well. If you want, you could use Ofcom ka reference in your CI. Suggest the platforms are not necessarily substitutional and indeed might be considered complementary. I want you all to give this a read. This would help you write whatever you want to, whatever you want to add up to this in a better manner. And another very important uh, reference that you could use over here. You know, there was a time when television used to be a uh, tel television aapko ek aisa platform tha, aapke paas ek, so aapke paas ek family activity hoti thi. I don't know if you guys can recall there was a time aapki family ikhatte baith ke and yeah, aapki family ikhatte baith ke dekh de thi. Uh, can, you, can you pull this mask up, please? Do we, do we all understand this? Right? But today with the past of time, things have changed. 1990s, the idea of social viewing was there. Aaj ab baat karte hain, janab, even little kids. They have their own sort of separate plaque. Post can there be up divisions they can give each man. Ek saath saal ka bacha, ek char saal ka bacha, aur ek bara saal ka bacha, unke alag alag interest honge. They all want to watch watch their own shows. So this entire idea of social viewing is today can be questioned. There are a few key terms that I keep on suggesting everyone should be going through. Number one, capitalism. I'm assuming by this time, everyone would have an idea about what capitalism is. Here you go. We could talk about transnational corporations. You need to know this as well. I mean, knowing these terms, is pretty important because then you can use them while uh, preparing for your CIs. It would enhance your vocabulary, your sociological vocabulary. So yeah, uh, this is uh, pretty much it for this particular topic. And uh, until we get started with the next one, take good care of yourselves. This is a summary. Uh, summaries again uh, should not be ignored. Summaries again need to be read well. So. Yeah, whatever we've been discussing since the last hour, summed it up in four different points. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it uh, from uh, this topic. The next topic that we have in line would be the perspectives on uh, media, right? And we've discussed about the perspectives in quite an exam and we've discussed them uh, in quite a lot of detail, but uh, I still want to do the pro and Marxist perspective once more through this book. So yeah, that is it. Thank you.